Hello, everyone, and thanks for joining us. My name is Leolyn Bowen from The Vegan Woman, and today we are hosting our Vegan Activist of the Month. Marcella Torres and Derek Treesize are two inspirational vegan athletes and bodybuilders who are using their great physique and plant-based powers to promote veganism and to debunk vegan myths. Marcella and Derek are the co-creators and the co-owners of the Vegan Fitness and Muscle website and the Richmond-based personal training center, Root Force. They're also the co-authors of a vegan fitness and muscle guide. So in short, a true vegan power couple. So I first wanted to say thank you too for taking you know, the time out of your busy schedules to come and talk to me. I really appreciate it. Um, thank you for the opportunity. We're looking forward to it. Yeah, we're excited to be here. Yeah. Uh, so first, I want to start off with about a little bit more about you two. So how did you meet? Were you both met? We were not actually. <laughs> I was the opposite of a vegan when we met. Uh, this was about 2006 or 2007. Uh, I was very much an egg white and red meat eating gym, gym rat kind of guy who thought that vegetarians were not healthy. Um, and then I met Marcella and she actually had all, all kinds of evidence to back up, you know, a lot of what she was saying, what she was doing. And, you know, I was getting my biology degree at the time and learned about it and just dove right in. But um, we actually met on an online video game. Um, so we were mm -hmm. across the country and we were playing a game together and then we just, you know, started talking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's an awesome story. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and did the fact that you weren't vegan cause any dating problems? I don't think so. I mean, Not, well, it wasn't so much an issue because we were just chatting on a video game for the first year or so that we knew each other. Um, and then by the time that we um, met each other in person, he had adopted a vegan diet. Mm -hmm. um, so wasn't a problem, really. I just sent him um, care packages of vegan treats and stuff like that. And he, um, for Lent, with his friend, he decided to go vegan and ended up Feeling discovering that it's really not that hard to do. So Yeah, felt way better. And, and this is easy. Why didn't I do this sooner? <laughs> so You two are going to have people scrambling to pay more attention to those conversations and games now. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And how long have you two been married? Five yep. years. We last just year. celebrated our five-year anniversary. Well, congratulations. Congratulations. And I hear um, that there's another congratulations in order. Correct, Marcel? You're, you're pregnant with your second child now? Mm -hmm. Second second child. Mm -hmm. our, son, uh, our first son is three three years old right now. So That's awesome. I have a five-year-old, so I know that's a very, like, <laughs> age. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes. Um, Marcella, did you find with your first pregnancy, so you're um, vegan and now you're pregnant, was your family and your friends supportive of that decision? Yeah, there's no question. I think a lot of a lot of the questions that people get maybe is um, come from not having a good understanding of the, the health aspects of things. I think it really helps that we, our whole background and our whole job, our whole career is, you know, promoting the health aspects of a vegan diet so people kind of assume that we know what we're doing. Um, I feel like a lot of other women that I know get a lot of heat for that, for being pregnant or having vegan children, and it's because people don't respect what knowledge they may have about the health benefits, and a lot of people view it as purely an ideology. They don't understand that it's actually optimal for children. It's optimal for a pregnant woman. So I always try to make a, an effort to share articles about things like that and you know that it's I mean, even the American Dietetic Association says that it's perfectly healthy for a pregnant woman or a child at any it's healthy at any stages. stage of life so yeah I, I always take when I'm pregnant it's a great opportunity to <laughs> talk to people about that yeah the only opposition I've ever really met is from health professionals just mm -hmm. <laughs> a lot of the things they say, I'm just like, when's the last time you had a nutrition course? I mean, what, yeah. 1970s or something? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, was, I was vegan when I was pregnant as well, and I, I can completely relate to what you're saying. Sometimes I feel like you have to educate them. Yeah. Um, you want to bring them books and stuff. <laughs> yeah, exactly. My midwife, a book on vegan nutrition from some of the questions she raised. And I mean, I've had some, you know, there was a pediatrician we were looking at getting who was saying, well, you're going to have to be really careful to make sure that, you know, your son gets all his vitamins and minerals and everything. And I'm like, but do you say this to kid, to parents who take their kids to McDonald's and, and stuff like that? I mean, he's eating nothing but fruits, vegetables, and whole grains, and you think he's going to be having problems getting <laughs> vitamins? I mean, come on. Yeah. Yeah. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> and so your, your oldest child is three. How are you 
Um, how are you explaining speaking it to him? He is, I mean, he has been a participant in our um, events, and events and everything since he was four months old. And he's, we've never hidden the truth from him ever. I mean, when he, it was under discussion from when he was 18 months and up. He'd ask questions, you know, when he was two years old, he'd be like, what's the difference between soy milk and cow's milk? And we'd tell him, you know, we don't, we don't show him the video, gory videos or anything, but we just explain to him, you know, very matter of factly where that stuff comes from. And he has been, he, it's just never been an issue. I mean, even at school, if they have treats that aren't vegan, he doesn't want to eat them. And, um, he makes sure he asks, yeah, he asks. he's not sure. And if people give him stuff that's not vegan, he just throws it and he's just like, I'm going to throw this in the garbage. But and just yeah. now, since he's been three, he's really been kind of, he decided to be an activist all on his own, and he's been talking to his grandparents about going vegan. He talks to his friends all the time about going yeah. vegan. Yeah. Yeah. He asks people if they're, if they're vegan or not. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. But yeah, I mean, he's, you know, we've never presented it to him as, this is something you have to do because this is what we do. We just gave him the information and shared with him, and he has just come to that lifestyle for the same reasons we did really yeah he has a lot of conviction for a three-year-old it's pretty it's pretty cool it's pretty cool yeah and it's hard for a grandparent to say no to yeah <laughs> and so i guess you kind of answered my second part of the question because i was going to ask how do you deal with situations um that may have ha may happen more as he gets older but situations where aren't vegan events maybe school or he goes to a party so i know that he you said he's really vocal but do you let, like, how do you handle it as parents? Well, he, um, we send him, if we know in advance, we send him with a treat that's vegan. Mm -hmm. um, and at his school, he always had, like, a stock of special crackers and stuff like that that he could have. But the funny thing is, his teachers would always come to me and say, yeah, we, you know, we had this or that, we had cupcakes or something, and he just didn't want to see the blueberries and stuff. He doesn't really, he doesn't associate the food reward, food with reward quite as much as I think often happens in our culture because he's just always eating, you know, fruit and stuff like that. It's not a huge deal to get something sweet, so it's not a big problem with him. But, and then it, it's just parenthood and every pregnancy, all those things I just take as opportunities to educate other people. So it's never just like, I always take, I always explain our standpoint and why we're not doing it to his teachers, to other parents. Um, and we've had multiple other parents come to us at his school and say that they have adopted a vegan diet because they saw how healthy he was and how healthy we were and, you know, that their children are vegan now or that they're at least trying to be. Um, so it's huge. So there's always opportunities for advocacy, you know, with yeah. your kids. And it's, he's just another role model, really, to get in front of a whole new crowd of people. Um, so it's all an opportunity. Yeah. That's awesome. And so to switch gears a little bit and talk more about your awesome business that I loved hearing about and reading about, how did this idea of a vegan fitness business come about? It, it actually developed very organically. I was the, the director of personal training at Gold's Gym here at the time, uh, and I was promoting a vegan diet heavily with my clients. You know, a lot of my clients were just people who wanted to get in shape. They had no idea about any of my nutrition background. And I started informing them about animal products and why it's not optimal and you know, people that listened to me were getting in much better shape, much faster. Um, I was getting, I was getting much better results than any two other trainers there, even when we had like weight loss competitions and things. And so I, you know, we decided with Marcella's help because she's the, the master chef, uh, we decided to make a blog and share recipes, you know, cause a lot of my clients are like, all right, I'll try it, but what do I do? Um, so we made a blog and you know, it was mostly just for my clients and it, it grew from there. And then after, I think, a year or two, we decided to offer online personal training because we got a lot of email inquiries, people like, hey, do you train online? Or, hey, can you help me give me diet advice? Can you give me exercise advice? So we decided to create, you know, online personal training through that. That was basically, it started out as email only. Um, and it's really grown organically from there. Yeah, this was when he had his full-time directorship job. I was working full-time as a mathematician at a corporation and we were doing this on the side and eventually and actually after we went on the vegan cruise and we talked with Robert we've been talking with Robert Cheek who's a kind of the godfather of vegan bodybuilding and a lot of mm -hmm. other people were like you know let's just do this so we took the plunge I left my job um, this was right when we had our son too we started our mm -hmm. our um, physical location our personal training studio and local mm -hmm. outreach efforts and the um, website fully launched so yeah, so that was in 2012. We um, yeah. we opened our in-person studio just for ourselves. I left Gold's Gym, 
Um, and really everything's just been growing since then. It's just every year we have more people. I mean, we have people who are coming to us now locally in Richmond, Virginia, which is not that big of a city, um, who are just, you know, they're like, I've decided to take on a plant-based diet. I looked you up and found out you were a vegan trainer and I want to work out. And, you know, and so we're getting more and more people all the time and it's, it's really exciting. It's really cool. It's really great to hear actually. <laughs> um, <laughs> do you think that as a vegan, there is this, um, there's this more pressure on you to look slim and be healthy. And then especially in the world that you're in this, you know, this fitness and bodybuilding world, you feel that you have more pressure to be uh, really healthy. Yeah. I think that anytime you're different, um, regardless of what you're doing, anytime you're going against the grain a little bit, you're going to be more closely scrutinized. Um, and anything that's not perfect can be blamed on what's different. So anytime that someone's like, you know, you don't look healthy or you're too thin or you're overweight, it's because you're vegan. You know, that would, that would be, and you know, it could be anything else. If you train a different way or if you, you know, do or don't take supplements, people would highlight what's different and say that if that's why. Um, so it's no different in that respect, but absolutely we have to, you know, yeah. we have to be it's, a positive example and be in top form. We view it as a marketing tool. I mean, that's what all this is about. I mean, I've been vegan for 14 years. I was vegan for a long time before I actually became a fit, healthy, athletic vegan. And no one wanted to listen to my rants about <laughs> the ethical side of things until I looked, you know, I was in the gym and I was, you know, working out hard and people would come up and be like, what do you eat? What do you do? You know, how do you, how can you train like this? And then I'd tell them and they would actually listen. Or, you know, when people come to our VegFest booths, they're not saying, you know, this can't be done because they can see clearly that it can. They're saying, how can you do this? You know, the whole conversation changes. So I think that that makes it worth the effort because for me anyway, just looking a certain way is not going to make me <laughs> put the effort in in the gym. I don't really, I'm quite comfortable with myself regardless, but I want to be a walking billboard for a plant-based diet. I want people to approach me with questions and I want them to be open to my answers and it really helps with that. And so if someone's watching this video and they're like, okay, great. I are, and they go to your website and they see how great you look and they're like, you know, I, I think I can do this. I think I can get into this competitive bodybuilding arena. What would be the first thing that you would tell them to do? Uh, competitive bodybuilding on a plant-based diet? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, the first thing is if you're transitioning, make the transition. Um, I think a lot of people try and take everything on all at once. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it's a very good idea to – let yourself adjust to the diet, get used to buying new food, get used to cooking new meals first. Um, and then, you know, obviously you can pick up exercise at that point, but I, I think it would be too early to jump into a competition or something. Um, which we've seen some people do, and I, I applaud their enthusiasm. Um, but yeah, get used to the diet, start getting used to the new meals, start exercising and training hard, and then adapt and, and see how it progresses, and then you can start making objective goals. Because for a lot of people, all you got to do really is eat a whole foods, plant-based diet, and you'll see tremendous benefits just from that. So there's no point worrying about doing things like tracking your macronutrients and getting the spreadsheets out and checking in on your fat, body fat every week unless you really are about to do a competition. Really, all you have to do is, you know, whole foods, plant-based, add in some exercise, and then you'll probably see amazing results just from that. But then, you know, if you want to be, if you want to take it to the next level, it certainly is easier on a plant-based diet, that's for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I noticed for myself, I got leaner effortlessly when I became, became a vegan, even though I wasn't eating well, I would say. Um, and like I said, when I was at Gold's Gym, we had a, a weight loss challenge every single year in January. It's the Gold's Gym 12-week challenge. And, you know, there was winners in different age classes based on who lost the most weight. And my clients would always lose the most weight. I would get three or five winners, whereas the next best trainer might get one. Um, and it was because I was telling them to eat beans and broccoli instead of, you know, <laughs> chicken and egg whites. Yeah. And, you know, it's it, it's not really a secret, even though a lot of people are surprised. It just, it works. It's it's better for your body. Your body responds better. So um, I guess the key takeaway, too, is a lot of people would think that even as a vegan, you have to eat a ridiculous amount of protein. You don't. So if you wanted to adopt the competitive bodybuilding style diet, if you wanted to get in that kind of shape, you can still eat a lot of carbs, you know, in, in whole food form and get there. So that's, like, really the key thing is just eat whole foods plant-based You'll see tremendous change from that. Don't think you need to eat a bunch of vegan protein powders because you don't. You don't have to do that. And you eat a reasonable amount from whole foods. Mm -hmm. so. Absolutely. And so you two have really accomplished a lot um, professionally and business-wise. So what's what's next for you in terms of your business, in terms of your competitive bodybuilding? What's what provide for you? 
Well, bodybuilding wise, I have a contest coming up in September in New York. So preparing for that current. It's his first pro contest. Yeah, so. my, my first pro professional contest in men's physique. So, um, you know, training hard for that, and you know, hopefully I'll do well. Uh, professionally, we're, we're really just trying to grow. Our, our whole objective is to create role models and to be role models so that we can create more of a grassroots change and get more people to adopt a plant-based diet. So we're looking to you know, get more clients. We're looking to bring on more plant-based trainers um, and just make everyone that we work with or interact with become their own role model so that the people around them can see and change and adapt and, and so on and so forth. And then what would you say would be your hope for veganism in the coming years? I mean, so much has even just happened already. It was from when I went vegan 14 years ago, and even from when we started doing veg fest, and everyone would come up and say, but how do you get enough protein? You know, we just did a veg fest last weekend, and nobody said that. It was the first Not time once. that's ever happened. It's like people came up, and they had, you know, informed questions. They already had done research. They already had heard and they just wanted some details. And that's a huge difference from way back when, when people are like, vegan, what's that? You know, they didn't even know what the word meant or anything, I mean, but just more along that line. I mean, the plant-based movement has made a huge difference, you know. Works Over Knives, documentaries, things like that. I'd love to see more like that, have just more, you know, information out there, and more people picking up on that information and educating themselves, that's what I want. Yeah, else. it's very much the same in the, in the exercise and fitness industry as well. Like even five years ago, when I was a trainer at Gold's, people would ask me about my diet because I was in good shape and still am. But um, and they would just be shocked. They'd be like, really, <laughs> really. And now people are like, oh, you're vegan. That's cool. It's it's a whole different reaction where they like, they just immediately accept it and then they ask you questions about it. Um, and I mean, I subscribe to several fitness magazines and journals, and you see articles about plant based nutrition in them every issue now. Whereas before, it was never mentioned. It wasn't even on the table. Yeah, I picked up a Muscle and Fitness Herders a couple of days ago, and they had a section in there on with vegan nutritionists talking and how to do um, competitive bodybuilding on a vegan diet. And that's a huge mainstream magazine. I would never have expected to see that just mm -hmm. a few years ago. So Exactly. Yeah. It's just it's becoming more and more on the radar um, in every aspect you look at it. And I think that's just going to continue to happen, and, and that's really our hope is that it becomes more and more the norm to where it starts displacing, you know, everything else. Yeah, and of course our ultimate dream is that everyone is vegan. We all yeah. have it. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. I have that dream as well, so <laughs> we'll mm -hmm. get that. That'll be great. <laughs> so, you know, that was actually my last question, so I wanted to say thank you two so much for, like I said, taking your time out and, and talking to me and um, educating me and our readers about your business and what you have accomplished and what you're going to accomplish. You two as a couple are really, it's really exciting to hear you two speak and to read about your business. Um, like I said, as a couple and as business-wise, so you guys are really inspiring and I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for having yeah. us. Thank you for talking to us. Thanks, appreciate it. Thank you for being with us and I hope that you enjoyed our conversation. If you'd like to read more about Derek and Marcella, please visit the Vegan Woman website where you can read our full feature on this power couple. We'll actually list the direct link in the description box below. If you enjoyed this video and you would love to hear more from the Vegan Woman, please like and subscribe. Thank you so much again for your time. You have a great day. See you next time.